So the first thing I'm going to do today is I am going to make um, a little marini. So marinis, you might have heard the term Mili Fiore. Mili Fiore are uh, little chips, glass chips. And let me see if I can get a couple here to show you. This, let me see if I can get it focused. Okay, you see my tweezers there? I'm trying to stay away from the flame. Anyway, in between my tweezers here is a little glass chip. And if I could get it really focused on the camera, I don't think my camera will focus. Anyway, it's a little glass chip and it has a design inside. And I make these two and I use them in my beads. So here's a bigger one. Maybe you'll be able to see this. See, let me see if I can get it. It's gonna be in the flame. If I get it in the flame, it'll melt or pop because it's not uh, warmed up. Anyway, so that's a little glass chip. And how I make these is I uh, wrap the glass. I work from sort of the inside out. So I make the design from the inside, working layer by layer, adding layer after layer of glass till I get to a big, what they call a gather of glass around a metal. Here's one that's waiting to be chipped off. So you can kind of see, this is a steel mandrel. There's a blob of glass on the end. This is an old marini cane that I made and it's just waiting to be cleaned off. And once I get it to this point, I heat it up, I melt the glass back down to a molten state, and I pull it. And the faster I pull, the thinner the rod or the cane, the slower I pull, the thicker. So I'm gonna get started. I've been doing this about eight years, and um, I love it. It's a creative outlet for me, and I've found my groove. I love these little marini chips. I put them in almost all my beads and people seem to love them. So enough talk, let's get to work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean off these steel rods. Now one thing, when you put hot glass in a steel rod, it sticks, it won't come off. So if you are making beads, one of the things you need to do is add a substance called bead release to the metal. And that is like a clay product, sort of like a liquid clay product, and it dries uh, kind of chalky. And then you're able to put the hot glass on top of that once you heat it up. And that way, once the bead is done annealing in the kiln, you can slip it off the mandrel, and you can clean out the bead hole of all the bead release, and you have a nice hole. Without that, it would stick forever to the uh, steel. But when I use this, I just showed you a few minutes ago that I had a big blob of glass on there. Um, that glass was stuck on there, except that when I had made that cane, it was hot. And when it was hot, I plunged it into cool water and that cool water will break up the glass really quick. So it was kind of just hanging on by a thread to the steel and that will shock it off. And so that's what I just did. I just banged off the rest of the glass and now I have two mandrels to work with and these are my um, my marini making mandrels. So right now I'm just heating up the tips. I'm gonna put them in my rod warmer. I have a rod warmer. I would show it to you, but if I do that, I'm gonna have to set this all up again. It's actually for hair curling. It's used uh, in salons, I think, to heat up curling irons for hair. But it works great as a rod warmer. It's probably around between 850 and 950 degrees. I can put a rod in there and that way, uh, as soon as I introduce it into the flame, it will not break apart. Because once I introduce cool glass to a hot flame, sometimes it will shock. And the shocking means that it will break apart into little tiny pieces and sometimes those little tiny pieces will fly into your, to your face, fly into your chest, fly onto your arms. And yes, I've got the uh, the burns to prove it. <laughs> you don't you don't do this hobby uh, for long enough and not have the scars to show for it. Um, it's sort of like a badge of honor in a way. I've got a nice big one on my wrist from last time. Uh, anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I think when I first started this hobby, the f I was really afraid of the flame. Uh, just turning on this torch the first time. The way this torch works is with a propane tank and an oxygen concentrator. Um, so now you can see the tip. I've like introduced this rod into the flame slow, and you can kind of see where the tip is starting to glow. 
that tells me that it's starting to melt. And I can use this and start winding it around the rod if I want. But I am not gonna start with this color. I just picked it up so you can see. So I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit. And you can see the color will go back to dark. The dark is just because it's hot. And when it cools all the way down, it'll go back to its original color that you can see. So for now, I'm gonna set this aside. I don't need that. I'm going to get my preheated mandrel back. And this is a uh, just a steel little dowel here. And I am going to start with some clear glass. Now what I'm doing is I am making one of my hollow tube marini. And they look like little, little tubes because they have a core of clear and then they have a colored outer layer. And when you encase them in more clear glass and a little bead, you can see through the middle. So it's a really cool effect. Oh, you know what I forgot? Before I do that, before I do this, I've got to pull some stringer. I forgot, I don't have any stringer in the color I need. I'm gonna put some little stripes in that hollow core and I'm gonna do it with this dark brown color. So I will introduce this rod, which is cool because I had not put it in my rod warmer yet, to the top of the flame. The flame at the top is nice and cool, relatively speaking, right? I mean, we're working with thousands of degrees here, but at the top, it's less hot than it is down at this blue area down here. And actually, on the video, you can see where this, this uh, blue section here is very uh, distinct. You can see it pretty clearly, and then you can see it's kind of yellow at the top. The yellow area is less hot than the blue. And you might think it's the reverse, right? Because most of the times, like if you're looking at a knob or a color representation of cool, it's blue, and a color representation of hot is red. But in this case, the tip is a little bit cooler than down here. This area right here that is blue is where the oxygen and the propane come together at its most effective mix, I should say. Up here, it's kind of, it kind of peters out, and at the bottom, it's not quite mixed right, but right here, and that's why it makes it hottest right in this area. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to melt the tip of this brown, and I'm gonna get a little blob going. And the reason being is I'm going to make thin glass stringers from this glass rod. So I wanna get a little blob at the top and slowly it will start to glow and soften and slump. See it's starting to slump. I know it's tough because you're getting the soda flare. Um, that's something I don't see with my special glasses but um, on the iPhone you don't have that so you're gonna see a lot of that orange flame which is flare from the soda lime inside the glass. So you can kind of see it starting to curl up now. And I'm just gonna get a little ball because I don't wanna to pull too, too much stringer. Stringer is just another name for a glass rod that's very thin. You can go from a one millimeter, two millimeter thick stringer all the way down to hair, hair thickness, the thickness of hair. And it all depends on what you need and what you're using it for. For this, I'm going to be using a stringer that's about one millimeter or so. Um, and these are gonna become stripes in the middle of my tube marini. And then I'm gonna put all those tubes together. I'm gonna make one big tube, and I'm gonna cut it down, and I'm gonna use this little section of tubes, encase it in a bunch of clear glass, pull it again, and it's gonna be a cluster of little hollow looking tubes. All right, so now this is kind of soft and slumpy and I got a little bead of glass melted at the tip. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it and pull. If I pull fast, it'll make a real thin stringer. If I pull kind of slow like this, it will make a little bit thicker stringer. And then I'm gonna hold it, let it cool. So if I let go too soon, it'll just slump down. But it'll, if I, wait a minute, it will cool off and stiffen, and then I can go back in the flame to cut it. It's called flame cutting. There we go. Okay, so, saw that, and I'm gonna be able to use that stringer once it cools, 
not touching it, hopefully, I remember that, um, until it cools. And I'll be using that as the stripes in my tube. So I'm going to go back to my clear and my mandrel that I put back in my rod warmer. And I'm going to melt down this clear glass. So I'm going to keep the tip of my steel mandrel in the flame because glass will not stick to cold metal or cold bead release. So you have to warm it up so the two will stick together. So I'm going to heat up the clear. You can see it's starting to glow. It's almost like a fiber optic filament. I mean, if you look, I mean, it's hard to see this, but it's funny because on clear rods, the heat of the flame causes the glass to glow. And at the other end of the rod, the other end of the rod glows. The whole rod doesn't glow, just the other end. It's so funky. I mean, I would show it to you, but I don't think there's a good way for me to do that with the flame on right now. All right, so what I want to do is I am kind of winding this glass on, on top of itself. I am melting the clear at the same time as I'm turning the mandrel, and I'm kind of like squishing it down and pulling up and getting a um, blob of glass going here. Now I have to remember to keep the steel mandrel hot because if that steel mandrel cools off too much, that glass will pop right off. Even if the glass is hot, if the steel mandrel cools down too much, the glass will pop right off. And we don't want that because that means I would have to start all over. All right, so that is the first round. I've got a little blob of glass going there. I'm gonna keep it warm up at the top of the flame. And I'm gonna go around again. What I wanna do is I wanna create kind of a cylinder of glass, but first I've gotta lay, it, lay down an amount of glass to work with, to shape it into a cylinder. And I'll show you how I do that. Just a second, getting there. All right, keeping that mandrel nice and warm winding it around. Now something I know a lot of bead uh, or glass artists when they lamp work like this making glass beads, they worry about bubbles, air bubbles. And yes, air bubbles are a reality of uh, encasing. Encasing means covering a glass design with clear glass and it's kind of submerging and embedding those elements underneath a layer of clear glass. So right now you can see that I've got this, whoops, let's see, there we go. I've got this little blob of glass on the end of my steel mandrel. And I'm gonna heat it up so it's soft but not droopy. I don't want it to droop. And then I'm gonna start shaping it by rolling it back and forth on this marver, which is what this flat thing is called here. And I'm going to heat it up a little more and I'm just going to keep softening the outer layer of this blob of glass. I don't want the core, the inside of this blob to soften because that means the whole thing will be slumpy. And in order to shape the outside, I don't need the inside to be soft. I just need the outer layer to be soft. So this marver here that I'm rolling on is made out of graphite the same stuff that's in your number two pencils. <laughs> and if I put my finger on it and uh, rub it back and forth, it will leave a black mark on my finger, just like pencil lead will. And, but it has a nice non-stick surface that stays cool while you work. And you can roll the hot glass on it and it doesn't melt, it doesn't scorch, and it doesn't stick. So. That cylinder's looking good, but I'm gonna get it a little bit longer. The width is just slightly too narrow for me. So I'm gonna put another layer, I'm gonna wind it on. And in the bead making world, we call this around the world, where I'm aiming the flame at the heel of my clear glass rod that's in my right hand and I am pulling it around and kind of slightly overlapping each layer as I wind it on, but not completely.
completely, just I want each layer to touch. That will help eliminate air bubbles and it'll help it to keep a shape and melt evenly when I go to shape it again. Now the length of this is looking pretty good, but I need to reshape it. You can see that it's a little wonky looking. And so I'm gonna put it back into the flame and melt down the outer layer and shape it. And this is melting all the, the, the wound glass together. So it's, I basically just encased the former blob of glass that I put on there. And now I'm just lightly rolling it across my graphite marver to shape it into a cylinder, back and forth, very lightly. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. If I applied a lot of pressure, it would flatten one side and I don't wanna do that. So I want my little coral tube to be a circle, not an oval, not a square, not a triangle, not a amoeba shaped uh, center. So you can kind of see my cylinder's looking good. It's a little taller now, it's a little wider, but I need a little more glass because when I pull this down, it's going to reduce in size and diameter. And I wanna make sure that I have enough clear so that when I do put on the colored layers and I pull it down, that the, it really does look like a hollow tube in the center. Without enough clear in the middle, it will just look like uh, just like a little dot of clear and you won't be able to see all the way down to the bottom when you cut pieces and that's what I want. I want to see it all the way to the bottom. So this is my hollow core marini I'm making and I'm starting with a clear gather of glass on a metal steel ma mandrel and this is going to be a transparent center to my marini when I get done. The next step, I'm working from the inside out. So this is my hollow core, and then I'm gonna add stringer that I pulled earlier, and I'm going to heat it up and drag it across the cylinder. Now you can kind of see that my cylinder slumped a bit. And so, I don't want that. I want it to go back, so I'm gonna heat the other side and it is going to soften back up and straighten itself out. Half the battle, I think, with learning how to work with glass in a flame is heat control. It really is. It's, it's thinking ahead of time because, uh, like I said, I'm doing this from the inside out, so I have to be thinking sort of in reverse of what I want. But it's heat control. It's knowing how much heat to apply to the glass, keeping the mandrel hot so the glass doesn't pop off because if the, the metal gets too cool, it will uh, shock the glass that's hot. Hot and cool don't work together in glass making. Um, and then it will pop off, keeping that warm. And then also knowing um, the glow, how orange. And it's, I know it's hard for you to see because you don't have uh, the protective lenses like I'm wearing to see that through the soda flare. But when it is bright, bright orange, I know it's getting really hot and it'll probably get really soft too soon. So I'm gonna keep going, adding my stringer. And what I like to do is I like to apply two stringers on either side, sort of cutting the whole thing in half. And that gives me a guideline for centering them so they're not wonky. So I have at least a bit of an even, uh, spacing between each stringer line. So now I'm gonna cut this in half again. So I'm kind of going in quarters here. And I am heating up the glass so that I'm not having to tug or pull the stringer because they're so thin, obviously, stringers are gonna be delicate and they will easily break. And believe me, I've done that plenty of times. I might even do that now. Get impatient, you pull too hard. The glass isn't soft enough yet. Now I'm gonna go in between each of these and I'm running out of stringer, so I'm hoping I can get all the way around here. The 
before my stringer little uh, rod here gets too short because the shorter it is the closer my hands get to the flame and that's not good skin and flame are not good <laughs> ask me how I know I've been at this a long time I got a lot of burns to show for it anyway I'm going around and I'm heating up all the little stringer lines because if I don't, and they're not well adhered to the center, to the gather, the clear center, they will pop off. Again, glass loves, warm glass loves warm glass. Warm glass does not like cold glass or cold metal. And it will uh, not play nice together. All right, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see, but some of my lines are a little off. But it's okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. This is a um, inside hollow core, uh, the hollow core of my Marini cane. I'll be pulling this really long and straight out to probably about six to eight inches long once I'm done adding all the layers. And that kind of stuff will straighten itself out. I'm not really worried about that. Plus it's on the inside, not the outside. If it was on the outside, I'd probably spend some time straightening it out. But I am not gonna worry about it today. Trying to talk and do this at the same time is a little bit of a challenge, so I'm gonna give myself a little grace. <laughs> Just gonna let myself get away with it. Why not, right? All right, so I'm gonna melt the bottom here. I know my gather's gonna get really hot really quick because there's not much glass on here. I'm just gonna melt it together because when I put on my next layer, I want the stripes that I just applied to be flat with the center gather. If, there's, if they're mounded or sort of bumpy, then when I put my next layer on, it, I will trap air bubbles. And I wanna to try to avoid that as much as I can. All right. All right, so my next layer is gonna be yellow. So I've got this yellow rod that I'm gonna put on top of my dark brown stripes and clear core. And again, I'm starting at the top of my flame to heat up this yellow rod, while at the same time keeping this gather of glass on my metal mandrel warm so it doesn't pop off. So I will just work the two until this yellow starts to darken the tip. I can tell it's getting hot. This tip is getting dark and it will start to glow and you'll see that tip of the yellow start to glow when it's getting soft and molten. Keeping this hot. So you can see this yellow starting to glow. You get a nice glowy tip and that means I can start winding it on. Now one thing I don't want to do is heat my gather on the mandrel too hot because if I start trying to push this glass on top of this one, it'll like pull at the bottom layer and misalign all my little stripes. So I'm going to keep the, the metal mandrel warm because that's going to cool off the quickest. And I'm just going to let that glass cool off a little bit. And I can just tell by when it starts losing the glow that it's getting cool enough. And now I'm going to apply this layer on top. And now what I do is I direct, and I know it's tough for you to see this because you're seeing all the soda flare, but I direct the flame at the heel of the yellow rod where it meets the gather on my mandrel. Now I've got to remember to go back and give some heat to my mandrel once in a while because if I don't, it will cool off too fast and this whole thing could pop off and all that work would be for nothing. Ask me how I knew. <laughs> I have been there. All right, I can see that my flame has gotten real low here, but I'm sort of in it now. I've got two hands, only two hands, and I can't turn up my flame. If I had a third hand, I'd be turning up my propane a bit right now to increase the size of my flame so it would heat it up a little more and it would melt this rod quicker. But right now, I'm just gonna work with what I have. It's a small gather. It will just require one of those things that I don't have a lot of usually, and that is patience. I don't normally have a lot of patience. But you know what? 
It's always good to learn, right? So I am just coiling this glass on, this yellow glass, row by row, remembering to go back and heat my metal until I get all the way to the top. And yeah, it's really stiff. So I'm going to burn this off. And now that I have a hand free, I'll increase the size of my flame. Hopefully I won't melt my phone. Let me see. Oh no. Pardon my finger. I just wanted to see if my <laughs> my phone was getting hot and it's not. That's good. All right, so I'm gonna lower it a little bit. It's a little bit too high. First thing I'm gonna do is you can see that yellow, right now it looks orange. It did not reach the metal mandrel. So I need to fix that. I need to push it down so that it touches the metal mandrel. Every single layer that I wrap around has got to touch the metal mandrel because it will give it sort of a point of origin, like a, a point of attachment. And every single layer needs to be attached to one thing, and that one thing is the mandrel. Because when I go to pull this, if every layer is not attached at the base here, then the layers will pull unevenly. So I'll have some that pull all the way through the cane, some that pull three quarters of the way through, and so on. And uh, I do not want that. I want every, I want the most usable amount of glass when I pull as possible. And these are things I can do to assure that I get as much in that cane as I can. And the cane, by the way, um, the cane is just a term used for a long rod of pulled glass. And then from that cane, I would cut chips or pieces in this case to use again in another design or a bead or whatever have you, whatever you want. So right there, I had a little separation between the layers and I just pushed it down. Now I've got all the layers melted together. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shape this just a little bit. I'm gonna look straight down the barrel, as I call it, to check my shape. And it's a little wonky. It shouldn't be a huge big deal, but I really want it round. So I'm gonna soften the outer layer of this gather and I'm gonna roll it lightly on my graphite marver to shape it just a little bit more into a cylinder. It's not super important with this kind of uh, marini cane that I'm making for it to be perfectly perfect, perfectly circular. Uh, normally when I make marini, I make lots of concentric circles, a circle within a circle in different colors. And when you cut them crosswise, you can really see whether or not they're perfectly circular or not. For this, it's a hollow core. You're not really gonna notice how circular the outer layers are but I still want it fairly circular. Also, when I pull, pull it out, it will um, it'll fix itself a little bit. But if it's too wonky, then it's just gonna look a little haphazard. But you know what? My end game here, I am making a hollow core marini cane. I'm gonna cut pieces about an inch long from this. I'm not gonna pull it too thin. I'm gonna pull it down to about four or five, maybe six millimeters, maybe seven depending on how much glass I have here when I'm done. And then I'm gonna cut those into pieces and I'm gonna um, take those one inch cross sections of this cane and I'm gonna reuse them and gather them together in like a cluster. And I'm gonna make another marini with those pieces. I'm gonna fill it full of clear glass so those elements, all the clear glass disappears in an encased marini bead. You, you won't see it, it'll look like it's nothing there. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna pull it again and what I'm gonna have is what I call my coral marini. It looks like little tubes of coral. And then I use that in my encased marini beads and they're like little, people have called them little worlds. But my goal is for it to look like the ocean, like the bottom of the sea floor. Although occasionally I'll throw in like a flower marini. It's art, right? <laughs> All right, so this is my last layer for this. I am going to melt down all these wrappings of my last layer. My last layer was orange, 
I know the second layer looked like orange because once the yellow gets hot, it goes to orange, but it'll cool off and go back to its original color. The last one is the pure orange. And once I am done with that, I'm gonna get ready to pull. And I need a little room for that, so I'm gonna have to, might have to stand up for that, but this is not a very big gather. It won't pull down that far, and plus, I don't want it too thin. I want this to be a thick pull because I'm going to pull it again a second time in uh, another Marini cane. I'm gonna reuse this, these pieces from this cane in another Marini cane. So it looks like a little cluster of hollow tubed coral. All right, so the outside of this is, I'm looking down the barrel, it's pretty circular. It's not wonky. If it was wonky, I might not roll it at this point. Once it gets too big, I can't really roll it. But what I can do is um, I have a, a handheld shaper. And if I can get this, uh, it's not wonky or not slumping, I should say. All right, so I am pretty good here on this one. I am going to, whoops, here we go. I'm gonna use a second mandrel now. It's been warming in my rod warmer, just the tip, not the handle, otherwise I would not be able to hold it. I have a rod warmer that um, is used actually in the beauty industry to heat up curling irons, but I use it to heat up my glass rod. Sometimes the glass is what we call shocky. And shocky means that as soon as it hits a flame, it explodes and flying hot glass is no fun. The rod warmer will help you be able to take a rod and go right into the flame and not have to worry about tempering it, which takes time. So it's just a time saver. All right, so I got the metal down here on the base warm and glowy, and I'm gonna melt the tip down the very top of my gather because I'm gonna plunge this, um, sorry, I know you're shaking there, um, plunge this other metal mandrel into the top. And now I'm gonna stick it to the glass like so and now I've got like a double-ended lollipop right okay so this is not a lot of glass on here normally when I make marini my concentric circle marini um, I've got five to eight layers usually no more than seven or eight layers with this size torch and also I only, my arms only extend so far um, the more glass you have in a gather for Marini, the longer the pull will be. And unless you have a second person to help you, uh, you're gonna run out of arm length to pull. So this isn't gonna take long, especially since that center is clear and transparent glasses uh, tend to uh, melt down. They're, they're sometimes a little stiffer if they're colored, but the clear one, this particular clear that I'm using, it's a, I'm uh, pretty sure this is an Italian glass, the clear. I have an American-made glass that I use for finishing, but this Italian glass is not super crystal clear, so it's great for Marini. It melts down really nice, though, pretty quick. So I'm, as you can see, I'm rocking it back and forth for a couple of reasons. I want to heat the mandrel so that it stays nice and warm and my glass doesn't shock off, but also because the heat soaks from the outside in to the glass. So as I apply the heat to the edges here, it's gonna make its way to the center. But I do have to give a little heat to the center because it's so much bigger. And I can see, I know you can't see because you're seeing a lot of soda flare um, in the flame, but I can see with my glasses, which cuts out that soda flare, I can see the glow all the way to the core. Even through opaque glass, I can see it. And I can also start pushing and pulling a little bit here. If I push and pull, you can see it's kind of getting stretchy and flexible, and I can feel that. I can feel that happening in my hands. So I, just from practice and from so many years doing this, I know when it's time to pull. So we're getting there. See, it's kind of flexy. We're getting there. It's still a little stiff. All right. Now it's starting to slump, so 
see are starting to pull away from each other easily and that's what I wanted. But I don't want it too soupy because if it's too soupy, it'll pull too thin. And for this, I really want to make sure that it stays around that four, five, six, seven millimeter mark. And just as, a, as an example, that rod that I was using, the colored rods I was using, those are about four to five millimeter. And that's about on the thinnest I want to go because I'm going to have to pull it down again in the second marini that I make with it. And I do not want it to be so, so thin. I want to be able to see that detail. All right, so this is good to go. I'm going to just heat up my mandrel on the ends here to make sure that they stay nice and warm while I pull it away from the flame and pull so it doesn't pop off. All right, there we go. And I'm going to pull. See, I'm pulling very slowly. The faster I pull, the thinner it gets. The slower I pull, the thicker it will remain. And that's about as that's about as thin as I want to go. I don't want to go any thinner than that. Now I'm just going to hold it here. I'm not pulling. I'm just holding it, letting it stiffen up. It's still a little wobbly, but I am going to let it sit here. I don't want to get it any thinner than that. I can feel that it's nice and stiff. It's not moving. I couldn't pull it any thinner if I wanted to. And you can start seeing the color is coming back. You can probably see that. The orange is starting to come back. So at this point, I'm just going to take my cutters. I'm going to cut this side off and cut this side off and hope that the glass lands on my metal. <laughs> it's really hard to cut when it's thick. There we go. Now you can see, see the center there, how it's clear. I don't know if you can see, but now it's cooling and sometimes, whoo, okay, did you see that? That is that glass popping off because it's getting too cold and it does not like it. So I'm going to just not put this back in the flame for the sake of my, uh, my safety. <laughs> And I'm just going to put this right into the water. And let me see if you hear the sizzle. This is great. Hang on. Ready? Ha -ha. You hear that sizzle? That sizzle is the glass kind of breaking up and exploding inside the water. Although it doesn't release from the metal quite yet on its own. So it's completely cooled down. It's back pretty much to its original color. But if I tap it on another metal object, there it goes, and it just popped right off. And that's called shocking off the glass. Just plunge it into the water and it'll come off metal. If I didn't do that, and if I let it cool all the way down, I'd have to heat it back up again and plunge it into cold water again to try to pop it off the glass. Because if it got all the way down to cool and it was still stuck to the metal it would never come off so well that is that that is my my little cane I know I've been on here a long time let me see if I can pick it up it's still really hot and I, I won't touch it with my hands let's see there can you see that there you go so this is my cane that I just made and cut and it will stay hot well too hot to touch uh, for probably about another 10, 15 minutes or so. And then when it's cool enough, I can use it in anything else that I want to make. And for this, I'm planning on um, probably making the center of another marini or something. Uh, these little hollow tubes are so much fun because when you put them all together and you cross cut them and then you submerge them in clear glass, it looks like little hollow tubes. If you happen to be interested in looking at my work, feel free. My website for my glass art is www.cc.